thinking about selling a business or investment property that could result in a substantial profit and consequently a large tax bill? Well, you may be able to take advantage of a popular tax break that allows you to defer payment of any capital gain taxes due on the sale or maybe entirely avoid them. And here to talk with me about this is Philip Hertzberg from Team Hewins. Philip, welcome. Thank you for having me on uh, today's show, Bob. You're welcome. So we're eager to have you walk us through, uh, I guess, what is ultimately called a 1031 exchange. Certainly. Yeah, uh, these uh, 1031 exchanges, um, they're also called like-kind exchanges, and it's for the section of the Internal Revenue Code they fall under. And they permit taxpayers to replace real estate property used for business or investment purposes or with like-kind property without paying taxes on the proceeds. So you would think about the 1031 exchange as a planning technique if the sale of your business or investment property can result in a substantial profit and consequently a large tax bill. So you may be able to take advantage of the 1031 exchange's popular tax break to defer payment of any capital gains taxes due on the sale or maybe even entirely avoid them. Great. So there are some things, some some considerations that uh, go into uh, contemplating whether to do a 1031 or not? Yeah. And before we go into these considerations, it's important to know, you know, while this planning strategy is a prudent way to diversify real property holdings and postpone taxes, real estate investors do find that the 1031 exchanges are complex and that they have strict requirements. So the, there are these four important considerations about the rules um, to know are, are helpful in anybody considering a 1031 exchange to defer taxes. Um, first, it's important to know about, uh, to have insight about the qualifying properties. So a key rule about the 1031 exchanges is that the transaction must take the form of an exchange with like kind properties, rather than just a sale of one property with a subsequent purchase of another. It, it's funny, uh, you do not need to trade an identical property type for another. The sole property and the new replacement property must be held for investment purposes or for productive use in a trade or a business. It's also um, critical to know that both properties must be within the United States in order to qualify for a 1031 exchange. So um, just giving you an idea here, the following real estate swaps are examples of those that are comparable fitting the qualified exchange of like-kind property rules. Uh, for example, an apartment building can be swapped for under, for like, uh, in like-kind exchange for an industrial building. An office can be exchanged like-kind for a shopping center. And even a raw, uh, raw land or a ranch can be exchanged in a like uh, in a like kind exchange, 1031 exchange for a strip mall. Notably, for properties or for personal use, like your vacation or a house or your primary residence, that doesn't qualify for 1031 treatment. Uh, land that is under development for resale is not eligible for 1031 exchanges. Um, and then the other important point to know is that securities and financial instruments such as stocks, bonds, notes, and partnership interests typically do not qualify as forms of like-kind property for exchange pr purposes. So, uh, Philip, is there a planning insight for these qualifying properties? As far as reporting purposes, should you use a 1031 like-kind exchange? you will need to complete IRS Form 8824 and attach it to your yearly tax return. And just be mindful there are certain conditions that can enable you to utilize a 1031 exchange on a principal or vacation home. You would need to rent the property out a certain amount of time and limit how long you stay there. Refer to a qualified tax professional or the IRS site for further details on these conditions. So, uh, and then in terms of the second consideration? What... Yeah, um, there are also very specific timelines and rules and just keep an eye on the calendar to successfully complete a 1031 exchange. Finding and closing on replacement property within strict time limits can be challenging in today's market 
where inventory is, is near historic lows in many areas. Um, first and, and foremost, you'll need to identify one or more replacement properties within a narrow window of 45 days of the, uh, of the date of the sale. And this replacement property must be equal or greater than the value of the original property. You can buy as many as three properties without regard to the fair market value or any number of properties, just as long as their aggregate value does not surpass 200% of your original's property sale price. And subsequently, the replacement property must be acquired within 180 days of the sale for you to capture the benefit of this exchange. Uh, one important point to know here with, um, within following these specific timelines and rules, let's say if your property is mortgaged or financed, you'll need to take on at least the same amount of debt for the new property. All right. So uh, some planning insights to offer with regard to this consideration? Sure, Bob. Uh, in, in terms of this consideration with the specific timelines and rules, you're going to want to avoid challenges with complying with the required time periods and consider naming a Delaware statutory trust or what's called as a DST to a separate legal entity as one of the replacement properties. And a DST is very similar to a real estate investment trust. It can serve as a professionally managed backup in the event you struggle to find a single replacement property. So you, you, um, that meets all of the Section 1031 exchange requirements within the 45-day identification period. And uh, each DST 1031 investor has a fractionalized ownership interest in the trust, which in turn owns the property. Great. Uh, consideration number three? Yeah, and, and just be sure to select a qualified intermediary. And to facilitate this 1031 exchange, you always need to choose what's known as a, um, a third-party real estate lawyer, accountant, or title company to act as this qualified intermediary and hold the funds in escrow for you. If you yourself take the receipt of the funds before the exchange is complete, you could ultimately trigger a massive tax bill, which will eliminate the tax deferral benefit of a 1031 exchange. So this qualified intermediary as, as a specialized custodian will hold the proceeds from the relinquished property and use them to acquire a replacement property, preventing the taxpayer from con coming into contact with them. So you can find these state-specific qualified intermediaries through the Federation of Exchange Accommodators, which is the only national trade association organized to represent professionals who conduct Section 1031 like-kind exchanges. So I imagine there's some planning insights for people with regard to um, finding a qualified intermediary? Yes, be mindful that there are certain conditions that can enable you to use a 1031 exchange on a principal or vacation home you would need to rent the property out a certain amount of time and limit how long you stay there mm -hmm. and refer to the IRS site or, or check in um, and ask your qualified tax professional uh, these questions or for more details. Right, and the fourth consideration? Yeah, there are some significant wealth planning benefits with 1031 exchanges here. Uh, a 1031 exchange can be an advantageous estate planning tool if you complete successive 1031 exchanges without paying capital gains tax and then pass away, you may avoid taxes altogether since your beneficiaries will inherit the property with a stepped up basis equal to the value of the property at the time of the death. Just an um, important um, point to know here is that these current tax code rules may be subject to change in the future. Another benefit of a 1031 exchange is that you may avert taxes associated with depreciation. If you were to swap one depreciable building for another, you can avoid depreciation recapture, which is a profit tax over time as ordinary income. Great. So one follow-up uh, 
uh, question, Philip, is uh, obviously we talk about this as a way to uh, defer or uh, capital gains or or avoid them, perhaps. Um, what about folks who might have a capital uh, loss, uh, uh, unrealized capital loss on investment property? Uh, uh, would you recommend that they use a 1031 exchange as well or or not? Every situation is different. So again, consult with your planning professionals. But in this in this case, the uh, the purpose of taking advantage of the 1031's popular uh, tax break is to postpone um, payment of capital gains taxes. So uh, it would not suggest, generally speaking, that um, a 1031 exchange would be uh, appropriate um, strategy to use. Right. So we covered a lot of ground. Anything we missed or anything that just bears reemphasizing before we wrap up? Yep. The takeaway here is that a 1031 exchange is a very efficient, albeit complicated technique to delay taxes on investment properties. Seek the guidance of a qualified tax professional, real estate attorney, or 1031 exchange agency in tandem with a certified financial planner professional, CFP, to support you through this complicated process. Well, Phil, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with our viewers and our readers. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate um, all your time and effort here and, and um, providing awareness to 10, uh, education to 1031 exchanges. Mm -hmm.